All right. Ladies and gentlemen, on the left-hand side, in the red, we have JSS Grass playing as Odin. On the right-hand side, we have Baron Gui playing as the mighty Zeus. This is Highland. Zeus, the king of the Olympian gods. Focus, infantry, and hero. Starts with 10 favor, gains favor 20% faster. Myth units cost one less population. Infantry do 50% damage to buildings, and hoplites move 15% faster. He has the ability to bolt a bolt of lightning from the sky that strikes down any single military unit. The Olympian parentage, the blood of Zeus, increases the hit points of heroes and reduces their training time. Odin, the god of war, magic, and power. Focus, the great hall units. Gathers and dwarves gather 10% faster from natural food sources. The great hall units generate 25% favor in battle. Human units and heroes generate 0.5 HP per second. Two Raven Scouts spawn once the first temple is built and respawn a short time after being killed. He has first god power is the Great Hunt to target a group of wild animals to greatly multiply their numbers. If there are none, Odin will summon a small amount and gets more powerful with each age. The Raven is his free scout and then of course the Hamask. Odin inspires Berserks to move and attack faster as they lose HP. Berserks for every one HP missing modify speed by 25%. All right, let's take a look here at these relics on the map. We have the Pandora's Box. Myth units cost less favor by 20%. Up here, we got the Kapesh of Horus. Heroes do more damage to myth units. And down here, we have the skulls of the uh, Sercopes. Our group of monkeys will periodically appear at your temple and respawn if killed. And down here, we have the Ring of the Nimbalong. Provides a small trickle of gold. So the earlier you get that, the better it is. Mm -hmm. All right, two villagers now on gold, and on the other side, we've got three dwarves. If you are the Norse, um, you do have not just gatherers slash villagers, you also have dwarves who don't cost food, but they cost gold. They are also able to get every resource just like a gatherer. However, they are better at getting gold and worse at getting food and trees. Also, as the Norse, you have ox carts instead of, uh, you know, drop off points. So you bring these around to wherever and they can, you know, supply you can do wood, gold, food, doesn't matter. They can all work with the ox cart. Uh, this being a water map. Um, you, most players will go for an early dock or something. Uh, and then they'll try to get a bunch of wood and they'll try to go up to the next age. And with that next age, um, you'll start building a bunch of ships to actually fight the other player on the water. But looking at this, grass isn't even really going for it. There's no dock made or anything. Could make one, obviously, if you want. It's got a bunch of monkeys here. Uh, my opinion on Freyr, I like Freyr. Freyr is fun. Uh, good defensive tactical leader. And you got some really cool god powers as well. All right, Ferran going to be moving back across the map here. Ferran has completely taken the water under their control. Uh, we've got the... Oh, give me a bolt coming in, of course, from Zeus there to take out the first myth unit. And grass is like, cool, you can have the water. Guess what? I'm just going to make a second TC and start double pumping villagers. Now, right now, Farron should be doing the same thing. They should be going for a double TC as well. If your opponent's not going to go for the water and they go for a second TC to try to out-eco you, that's fine. You keep the water, you get your own second TC, and then just keep scouting on the water. That's the most important part. Because what grass is probably going to want to do is boom up to the third age in that heroic age, sneak down a dock, and have his myth unit pop out, and then absolutely decimate you on the water while you're still in that second age. That's probably the plan anyway. All right. More and more dwarves are going to be coming out. We're getting up the uh, a bunch of resources here. Village account now is 20 to 20, but it won't stay that way for long now that we have two TCs on the field for grass. By the way, for those watching, both these players are top, top players ranked very high on the current uh, ranked ladder. Got a granary going to be coming down. That'll be for these deer. Let's 
Not only are they going to be getting food from the fish, they're going to be getting food from the deer in the middle. Get a tactical little wall going up there. The ravens from grass can be getting a bunch of great information on his opponent to see what he's doing, where he's going. And again, that look at, now we got to see a differential here. We got 23 to 25, and grass's eco is only going to get better and better. Again, though, uh, Baron does have the water. That does count for a lot here. Most importantly, though, what you want to do is actually take these ships, maybe do like a, uh, a patrol up and down the coast here. Because, again, I really think that grass is going to try to sneak a dock for that Mythic Age push. Uh, this is good from Farron. Gonna be going for their own second TC, which they do now have. So they can start double pumping villages of their own. That's gonna keep the villager count relatively the same while still owning the water, which is super important. No need to keep your ships together. You can split them up and just have them do different paths. That way you have twice the amount of area scouted at the same time. All right, two hoplites be chasing down these berserks here. Berserks at 4.8 speed, hoplites also at 4.8. So as soon as they hit them, they actually slow down, allowing you to catch up. Because whenever a unit gets hit in this game, it loses speed for a short period of time. All right, look in here. And there we go, guys. We're going to be seeing that heroic age out of grass. I think he might be looking for a dock possibly at some point too. Scout coming in right now from Farron, seeing what's going on. That gold mine's almost dried up. Gonna have to go for a new one. Probably gonna be like that one or something. And the two hoplites will be fighting the berserks here in the middle. Taking down the monkeys that were spawning from that. Definitely gotta stay away from that settlement, though. Hoplite trying to take these down. Takes down one. Can he get the other one? It's a close little battle, and he won. So I gave him no secret docks down here, which is maybe what he wanted to do. All right, Heroic Age is now up for grass. But we got an attack coming in for Farron here right before he ages up. Now, no villagers or anything to hit, so it's going to be kind of a more of a showboating attack than anything. A show of power. But now we do have a mountain giant out. We've got the TC here. We got two great halls going up and a little bit of infantry. Baron going deeper and deeper into enemy territory, though. You're not going to be able to, re uh, to run away. You're going to have to fight here as soon as that does begin. And there we go. We're going to be seeing the Walking Woods activate going straight after this TC. I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be enough villagers to stop this. Absolutely not. He also has a forest fire, by the way. Hasn't used it yet this game. Don't like with the army. I agree. But sometimes, you know, you just got to go for it here. And he is doing it. HP is dropping rapidly. But if, I think as soon as a couple of trees drop, it might not be enough DPS to out DPS the healing of the uh, villagers. And he's actually going to drop a heal on the base. Is it going to be enough? It looks like it is slightly, but the heal's over. And he is out healing it. He is out healing the DPS. He does save the base, but he did force Farron to use that heal, which is a super important power. Got a little attack coming in here from Farron, getting some decent villager kills, 49 now to 47. And keep in mind, while they are close together here in uh, villagers, he does own the water. All the his seed are going to be taking out the remaining forces right now. Great job there from Grass. Armor getting coming up on this side as well. It looks like he's going to be going for that gold on the high ground. Walls up across the middle on both sides. Still has the little monkeys he can send across the map if he wants to. Going for a third TC in the south as Farron goes right down the guts. 
No upgrades on anything, by the way. These are unupgraded uh, Minotaurs, unupgraded Toxotes for the moment. Oh my God. Oh boy. He's definitely not going to use it early, but well, you know, he might. And just like that, Farron just slaps grass uh, away from that third TC, taking it down. Got a little Pegasus up here as well. We're looking for some scouting information. By the way, he did get up triple dock up here. And we, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the Kraken. All right, we're seeing a big army actually going around the backhand side. You're going to look for some more villager pickoffs if you can get them. And the Fimble Winter will be getting activated. We also have, why is it called a medium hoplite? Uh, we have the Yorman Elver. You can be moving along with that Kraken. Everything in the water is going to die. Uh, he did not scout the TC. I think he was trying to sneak down here. It just happened to be going that way anyway. Underground passage here. We got underworld passage coming up. Oh my god. The two-pronged attack here from Farron. Look at this. Attacking in the south and the north at the same time. Grass, of course, if he wants. Oh my god, look at this. Triple Yorman Elvers on the map right now. Going after all these fishing ships. The water will be definitely claimed by Grass for sure. I'm surprised he has not used the uh, Fimble Winter here. What a beautiful two-pronged attack right now by Farron. Absolutely perfect. And here we go. The Fimble Winter has been activated. Oh my god, we've got Hydras! The four-headed Hydra goes down. He still has a two-headed. There's just there's way too many Yorman Elvers there for the, even the mighty Hydras. He's going to need quite a few more of those. Army down south, army up top. Looks like the army up top has been mostly cleaned up and brought back through the teleporters here. So many Yorman Elvers on the map. My god, look at these little sea snakes of doom. Army going all the way back up top. They're going to try to go through that teleporter before it gets beaten up here to save the day back at home. And there it goes. Fimble Winter has ended. How many villagers do they have left? 59 to 59. Didn't take a huge hit, but took a hit nonetheless. So many Yorman Elvers. Oh my god. These Yorman Elvers are everywhere. And of course, the Kraken just chilling, beating up the wall. Why not? Up top here, we do have a little hip squad, along with that Mana Core, ready to rock and roll on a moment's notice. Yeah, and just as predicted here, Farron getting absolutely bullied off the water. But what a great attack he did have on the land. Going after the south, taking out the, top, uh, the bottom TC, hitting a bunch of villagers. Not sure why that man, of course, going after that. Could be going after the, the uh, dwarves there, which he is now. But he ends up going down to the amazing Goaty. If you are uh, playing as a Norse and you're wondering why you're not doing so well versus myth units late in the game because you're using Hasir, Try using the Goaty. They also count as hero units, even though they don't say that. They are good against myth units. Look at this. It's been a lot of favor on those Hydras, and in the end, they just were no match at all for the Yorman Elvers and, of course, the mighty Kraken. Land army heading straight across the middle now. We've got some medium Toxotes. Oh, he's poor Goaty getting absolutely slapped right now. We're heading to the north again. That hit squad did get taken out earlier. Uh, he's got gold down here. Still no triple TC, by the way, but guess what? No triple TC right now uh, for Farron either. 72 villagers to 62 in favor of Farron. Uh, however, Farron no longer has anything on the water here, so if he wanted to, technically Grass could start going for some fishing ships. Military, though, Grass on 104 to 44. Uh, 
That giant is just pounding away at this. No upgrade on him yet. Still does the regular mountain giant, but powerful nonetheless. And once again, we have an attack here. 40 military to 114. I do assume a bunch of that military in the water uh, is military in the water, I mean. So that's why that bar is so full in that uh, regard. And Odysseus trying to hold it down. But uh, he's going to go down as well to the medium huskrels. And there he goes. The soul goes to the heavens. Now, what is the play here? Farron can be going to the mythic age as well, bringing in uh, some siege here. It is the mighty Petrobolo. But my God, grass going straight in. We could be seeing a lightning storm on this, maybe at home, but it's probably going to get used on the units here shortly. Here are going to be coming in clutch. There it is. The Petrobolo is coming in with the lightning strike. He's going to try to hide inside the hill fort, but the lightning can take down the hill fort. Not doing as much damage. Seven seconds left. Trying to take out the hill fort. Five seconds. Bust it out. All the units getting evaporated. Grass, you could have ran. Oh my god. And just like that, Farron slaps everything grass had on the land. You thought you were safe in your hill fort. Not today. Not today. Medium Toxo starting to push forward. You're going to be taking out that Great Hall. That water army still alive and well in the south. Look at that army of myth units. That is terrifying. The lightning storm is terrifying. Well, it's insane. The thing is, instead of hiding, he could have just ran away. I think and a good portion of his army probably would have lived. Maybe. If you're right in the center of it, though, it is harder to get away. But if your units are quick, you can get away. Because it has a certain radius. Oh, how often are you going to see a Medusa turn a Jormund into stone? <laughs> Look at that. And she's gone. All right, big attack heading straight down the middle here. We got some more Yormans on the way in, getting blocked, though, by the Belafron. Three Petrobolos in the north evaporating the hill fort. And here we go, happening once again. Oh, my God, the Belafron just slapped that. Bellafron getting a little uh, messed up there in the center. Got a heal coming down. Price trying to run away. Toxtorts moving forward. They're not going to do anything to these guys. You've got to shoot them with heroes. Where is Odysseus? And here comes the, the Armada right now from Grass right down the middle. This is why holding the water is sometimes really good. If your opponent's at the water while fighting, you can make some magic happen. And we've got the trees coming to light there in the south. He does have a hill fort. He's got the town center. He's got villagers. Will it be enough to protect this location? I'm not sure. Back down south, though. Look at this water army taking down everything Farron has. Oh my god, every single unit getting absolutely battered. I think Farron made a huge mistake trying to fight the water army with his land one. Could have just walked away. And look at that, the trees actually took down the settlement. And now they are on to bigger, better things going after the fortress. Changing their mind. Nope, changing their mind again, going back after the fortress. And there's nothing to stop them. They're going to kill a fortress. The trees are going to kill a fortress and a TC. Probably the most cost-effective walking woods ever. Bellafron popping out though. Bellafron slapping the trees, two tapping them, two tapping them, one tree left, and they're gone. The Bellafron is absolutely OP. Look at her go. Back up top, putting down some structure. Hill Fork gonna be going down in the front. Gonna get a nice little forward base to work from here. Burns down the forest in the north as well. Just absolutely evaporating at the forest fire continuing. Just a never-ending chain reaction. 
and the whole forest goes down. Helopolis pops out here. Could be using that in some of the other structures, too. They'll fort down. The attack's going to begin. We've got the champion throwing axemen. We know how much DPS those can do. It's a lot. Helopolis moving forward along with these medium hoplites. Definitely needs to get some upgrades on that infantry ASAP. By the way, that is the uh, only secure gold left up top there from what I can see. And then there's this goal, but holding that's going to be kind of difficult unless they can push back. Get away from the water, Farron! Get away! Oh my god, the Kraken chucked him! Stay away from the water! Oh my god! The Helopolis is no joke, though. Just pummeling forward right now in the midst of the base back home. We've got a bunch of portable rams and the rest of this infantry slapping everything Farron has. And another, uh, another fortress starts to go down there. 92 villagers to 100. Still has a decent eco, but things are definitely not looking that great. TC goes back up down in the south. Right, let's see what's going on up here. We've got quite a few goatee going up. we got some heroes versus hero action. More battering rams coming in. We got the butter knives taking down the rams. And the water army going back to the north. Helopolis, though, putting in some work. Could kill the hill fort. Not sure why it's attacking the longhouse. Try to try and stop the production. Villagers starting to get the gold. Hill fort halfway done. Villagers might be able to help out here. Fortress halfway done, not finished. All these half-made structures, they gotta finish them up here. Underworld Passage, where's that going? Looks like it's gonna be in the back on one of the only remaining gold here uh, from Grass. Huge move, huge move right there by Farron. 200 IQ maneuver. Still some gold on the other side of the map though that could be used. Never mind, never mind. That's the only one left. That one is depleted. That's when we need a Gaia mode for observing. Grass is just going absolutely insane right now. Fighting all over the place. Two walking woods. Baron going back down south, looking for some more damage here. Only 73 villagers to 96. And he's just continuing the onslaught. Look at these champion Huskrulls killing everything. Finally getting to get up that fortress, but here we go. A bunch of ballistas in the back. Look at the range on those. I rarely get to see these used. Now they're heavy ballistas as well. And this water army just going up and down the river, killing everything is insane. What an absolute slugfest we have. Oh my God, we got the heavy portable rams. Look at that on the front there. Probably back those up. No need to stay within the range of the fortress itself. They have really good defense against arrows, but still. Back up top, the fighting continues. Villagers going back up north, back to that gold. Putting up a market there, a double market, so we can start getting some great trade. Uh, not seeing any trade from Farron, though. Farron really needs that gold. Uh, Farron was trying to get gold up there. It gets shut down, though. Holding the water seems to be so good right now. Baron just continuing over and over again, trying to defend all these locations, pushing him off the gold again. Smart move here by Grass. He's like, yeah, come on over. Come on over. I got a present for you. Look at the art. Look at the Armada chomping at the bit. Oh, my God. Get the Jason in there. Have him fight those myth units. Oh, my God. Super great move here right now from Grass, dragging him to the water. Back down south, looks like that TC will be claimed by Grass here in a moment. 42 military to 105, 67 villagers to 99. Baron doing everything he can to try to stop Grass from getting that gold right now. Grass's gold income, pretty stagnant. He's getting a little bit from somewhere. Where is he getting that gold from? He's not trading. Am I blind? How is he getting gold? 
I don't know. Well, he's stuck on seven again. Oh, he wants to put the gold he had left in their hands into the caravan. Look at this great migration we're making. Does he know that gold's there? I guess one of his uh, water units probably saw it. I'm actually going to go to uh, normal. Yeah, he saw it. He knows about the gold. And that's probably the game-winning gold right there. Uh, Grass getting this is probably going to seal the deal. It would be my guess. Skip. And we got the Ulf Jarls on the field with the heavy, the champion throwing axemen chasing down this remaining force that was trying to hurt him in the north as these villagers look for some more resources to gather here. And Farron is getting pushed further and further back. Looks like Farron wants to go for one last hurrah, one last lightning storm, and I'll tell you what, I respect it. I respect it heavily. Nope, it's spent some of the uh, favor. We're at 300. Get to 350. You get one last lightning. What's going on, Morby, over on the YouTube? Look at him go here. Here we go. Three hundred and twenty-eight, three hundred and thirty. We're getting there now. What Farron has to do is somehow force grass. He has to force grass into one big battle. You can't be. It can't be a few little battles. It's got to be one big battle, and that's going to be happening right here. Lightning coming in again, jumping in the fortress. I don't think that fortress is going to be able to stand it here. It's going to try. Seven seconds left on the lightning as he tries to run away, getting evaporated. Four, three. Two, one, a bunch more get evaporated, but a few do live, and they're gonna end up going down. Grass still ahead here militarily and economy, but not by a lot. A bunch of medium hoplites moving forward. He is Zeus, those hoplites do have great structure damage. Look at these Medusas chasing them down here as well. Trade starting to be established for Farron here in the back, even gonna be taking that gold away. I'm telling you, that gold from Grass, this gold right here are gonna be winning him this game possibly. If he wins, that's why. Oh, a bunch of rams happening in the north. He needs to get something over there to deal with this. He's got a little force heading over there. Could just present the hoplites, leave some of the rangers down south. We got a fortress coming up in the back. And it looks like he wants to go for the juicy TC here, and he might just get it. There is still a gold mine back there. Unable to actually get it, though, being no. sieged down by the longboat. Gold income for Farron, pretty much stagnant except for that trade that he has established in the back of the map. Grass putting up walls, putting up more infrastructure, taking over the bottom left there of the map while still doing an assault from the north. TC goes down, unable to save it, and it looks like Farron starting to lose quite a bit of headway here. Man, those heavy portable rams are extremely tanky. Champion Berserks gonna be looking for some villager kills and look at that, they have found it. They have found the meaty, juicy point of Farron's economy here. A bunch of the donkey caravans, the villagers, it's over. Grass with a great victory there. But don't, guys, don't get it twisted. Farron played a beautiful game, but Grass just played it a little better this time. GG's in the chat, guys, to both players. What a great game to come back to after that horrible customs game experience. Thank you so much to Grass and Farron for having this game happen here because this was amazing. Great, great game for sure. Yeah, back and forth action all the way to the end there. Right when he got that gold, I think it's really going to start to skyrocket him for sure. Resources back and forth as well. For those watching in the future on YouTube, my name is Yodesla, and I'll see you guys next time.